Welcome back to another episode of TVGP's We Rogue Like It, the show where we play every rogue like in history. Don't tell Moonpeer. I'm it. your host, Boston. Stop it. Showing <laughs> me as always is Moonpeer. Hello. Uh, Monkey Senior is out on vacation. If you're watching the video version, you can unlock him by beating Mega Satan. So get to it. Uh, we're here to talk about our fourth and final week of Dead Cells. Uh, I I played a whole lot of this this week, mostly to try and unlock stuff, and I mm-hmm. didn't get much done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm. De- I played a whole bunch of one cell difficulty. Oh um, boy. Insert joke here where Monkey has beaten the game on four cell mode already. Yeah, he's like top of the of leaderboards. It's, yeah, it's he's speed running point, it. I mean, yeah. Uh, so I played a whole bunch on one cell, uh, and I managed to make it to the last boss like two more times. Nice, and got absolutely trounced both of those times. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, I'm probably gonna dunk it down a couple of notches and. Probably just grind away trying to get some of those unlocks. Like, I don't even have the maximum potion unlocked yet. Oh, yeah, I don't either. Like, because that's a lot of stuff. How, ma- lot of stuff. how many souls is it? Like, the one I'm on now is like 500. Oh, okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like a lot of the systems. Like, I like that you need to unlock X number of items to get to the point where you can start putting souls into some of those more foundational upgrades. I do lo- mm-hmm. I like the system a lot between levels after you beat a boss where you talk to, who is it, the blacksmith? Yes. Um, where um, you can, the collector? Maybe that's him, yeah. Where you're putting your, all your souls into making the better rarity items show up more often. Mm-hmm. Like I like that system a lot. I feel like that's... Dead Cells can often be a really frustrating game, especially at the beginning, where I feel like some other roguelikes might run into these problems and not really address them. But Dead Cells does such a good job of you're at least you can at least get to that first the end of the first level regularly. And even if Mm. you're doing that, you can put some souls into unlocking something like you're run over run you're at least making a little bit of progress um i feel like a lot of roguelikes don't always do that very successfully yes in fact it's the <clears throat> roguelikes where you I, I, I was trying to think of a way to describe 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 this i was trying to describe this to my to my wee wife and i was trying to explain why i like roguelikes so much um, no, I was trying to describe it to to my wife and like say why I like certain types of roguelikes and why I don't. And I realized that I love a good progression based roguelike. Yeah, where you feel like you're making steps forwards every single time you play, even if you have a bad run, it's still progression. Which yep. so far I've noticed, like on all of the roguelikes that we have, where I didn't like them as much, it's always one where I don't feel like I'm progressing. Like right. 20xx is a good example of that. Like I don't feel like I made progression in that. It was all about this, the look of the draw kind of thing. Yeah, I've um, been playing Isaac on my Switch lately, and mm-hmm. even if I have a bad run, I'm playing a lot of Maggie, so I'm having a lot of bad runs. At least maybe like put a couple of cents in the into the donation machine you're maybe blowing up some tinted rocks to unlock something else like you're making progress run over run sometimes it's really big where it's like cool i just i beat seven you know check marks on this run or eh, maybe i just toss 10 cents in the donation machine and i think that's what's so great about dead cells is even if you have a bad run you can at least say like cool, I got nothing good on this first floor. I'm going to sprint to one of the exits and get that two-minute door, get a bunch of cells, yeah. pump that into something, and just see how far I can go. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of my favorite things about it is it feels... <clears throat> well, it feels tough, number one. Yeah. Because it is tough. Um, and, But at the same time, it still gives you that yeah i'm making progress it's the dark souls effect it's i'm making mm-hmm. even if it's an inch it's progress every yep. single time and like it helps me in this case especially to know yeah i'm definitely making progress because i did one cell difficulty and made it up to the last level several times mm-hmm. uh, like i made it to a whole bunch of new environments i now know how to get the giant's key so i can try and get into the cavern yeah uh, like 
I've figured that stuff out and it's like, okay, now I just need to put that down and implement it by making progress. And hopefully I actually going to new areas, finding new stuff, but at the same time, just getting a whole bunch of new unlocks and then mm -hmm. the new unlocks change the way you play. Right. Like did, did you find, I just found it, I think it was yesterday when I was playing. Did you find the Half-Life unlockables? I found the cosmetic. Um, that's all I've found so far. I haven't unlocked it yet, but I've definitely found the the suit. So I found the suit and the crowbar. Um, there was. Oh a, yeah, I do have the crowbar as well. Yeah, I like that. There's just a dude with a head crab, and I like that they reference unintended consequences, which is a, a mm -hmm. really good cut for Half Life. But yeah, it just the HEV suit and just a crowbar. And it's like, all right, cool. Like that's. I don't, I don't know where this came from, like a lot of the other uh, sort of winks and nods in this game, but all right, yeah, I can, I can appreciate that. Yeah, um, I love a good indie reference. Yeah. I, I really wish, I really wish I made more progress in this game, especially for how much I played it, but I feel like, like we talked about a lot in T-Bomb R, you're just building the flowchart. It's like, here's the good synergies, here's what all the enemies and the bosses do, here's how I can abuse this first boss fight with whatever build I have. You know, you're you're learning and you're you're getting better and um you're using all of your tools to get through stages faster and better and smarter. And it just I feel like I never got over that hump where it's like, alright, cool, now I've got I've got these great builds and one cell mode is easy. Now I can get over that hump to get to the next one. And I just, yeah. in these four weeks, that, I, that just never happened for me. But I beat the game for the first time. And that, yeah, I'm excited I did about the that. same thing. First yeah. run as well, first time, which is the most shocking thing. Yeah. Um, but and yeah, I mean, it, good. it's a good game. Yeah. Like, it's a genuinely good game. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, you and I had both played it before. And I feel like even if we hadn't, We'd probably be excited to play Dead Cells because nearly everybody that plays it is like, yeah, Dead Cells is really good. And a lot of it is like, I never played a roguelike and Dead Cells is really great. And I sort of get it. Um, I feel mm -hmm. like that's that's been pretty great. Um, and I wish I had more to say about it, but Dead Cells yeah. is still really good. And they keep putting out patches that keep improving the game in sort of fundamental fundamental ways. So. Yeah, I mean the simple fact that they give you the um, they give you specifically you mm -hmm. the screen shake option. Like, oh god, I appreciate it so much. <laughs> it's so good. I can play the game for like because before it would be like I play a run, maybe two, and at the end I'm just like, this is I do not feel well. But now I can just I can keep banging my head against that wall, and however many fifteen minute runs I want, I can get done. I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's yeah. that's the thing that this is really good for. It's really good for quick runs yeah like don't get me wrong if you have a, a really amazing run you're still gonna be like there for an hour right right, right. But if you do a really quick like if you're having a couple of bad runs it is just a in and out kind of thing it's like cool okay yep i, I it that wasn't a winner <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah uh all right let's talk about our next game here uh since monkey is out we'll save our science for next week uh so the the first episode of the next game will come out alongside the uh, the science episode. Uh, the next game is that has been this one is uh, randomly chosen uh, is Moonlighter. Uh, came out on PC, Xbox One, PS4, and Switch. Um, if you don't own this already, the Between Dimensions DLC is out, and it looks like there's a good bundle with that and the base game that saves you a couple of bucks. We want to scoop up both at the same time. Uh, so okay. we're gonna play uh, Moonlighter, which is a game that. You played it or you haven't? Yeah, yeah, I played it a lot when it came out, and I really like half of it, and kind of really didn't like the other half of it. Um, and I, I'm they they have gone and they've they've spent a ton of development time sort of smoothing out a lot of the edges on the game. Um, as a result, I'll probably just start a brand new run uh, just to to start from the beginning. Um, but I'm. I'm sort of excited to play it again just to see what state it's in now um, because mm -hmm. I, f I finished the game originally and was sort of like, hmm, okay, that's interesting. That that 
you guys sort of took a gamble. Interesting. Um, so we'll see. Uh, our next game is going to be Moonlighter, and we'll see you all next run. Bye. Bye.